Hey folks, today we will talk about Oligopoly. Oligopoly has few firms, either two, three, four, up to maybe even eight. A good example of an oligopoly would be the diamond industry, where we have about two diamond producers in the world, a duopoly, and they do control about 90% of the diamonds that are mined worldwide. To also oligopolies, you could even look at the vehicle industry. In the United States, we had the big three American makers, uh, Ford, GM, and Chrysler. In the telecommunication industry, we do have AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, and T-Mobile. So we do see a lot of examples of, of oligopoly today. And besides having a few firms, the other assumptions are the oligopolis is a price setter, which would be, could actually make the price uh, based upon the demand curve. It is pretty much challenging to enter the market, exit the market like a monopolist is because the very few large companies control. So we could say to medium to hard time to enter the market. Now, one of the unique things about oligopoly is something called mutual independence, which really means that a company is dependent on what another company would do uh, in pricing. So we could also call this interdependence, where if one company is going to lower price, other company to be able to, again, sell, make its revenue, would also have to lower its price at the same time. Now, we also can see that in an oligopoly market, advertising is also essential for companies to distinguish themselves from others. Uh, think about Ford, think about GM. And at the same time, in an oligopoly market, we could see that for the firms to be able to compete in an open market, uh, they would need to be able to uh, be as independent as they can in their pricing. However, there could be a chance of something called collusion that can also take place in this market. So if you have, let's say, two companies, think about two gas stations, and they are both adjacent to each other, and the nearest gas station is a few miles away, there's a much higher likelihood for these two gas station owners to come together and talk and even possibly discuss ways to keep prices at a certain level, uh, hence collude in the market uh, by maybe perhaps not lowering price to where uh, supply and demand would tell it to be. And this could be one of the caveats of an oligopoly market where you may have, again, collusion take place among the companies involved. So if you think about collusion in a form of real life example, we have OPEC, which stands for the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. And they are in essence a cartel where the nation, they are the producer of petroleum, are able to get together and really have a, a strong impact on the production of oil produced thereby affecting the price of oil per barrel. So there is, again, that potential collusion when it comes to an oligopoly market. So what I'm using here is we're using the same exact numbers for the cost in the previous examples, uh, but now you can kind of see how we have, again, price at a different set. So what I'm trying to show you here is you may have two or three companies uh, that also deals with mobile car washing uh, like yours. And let's say that the other owners have called you and said, hey, let's keep the price somewhat at bay. Let's not decrease price too much. I will agree to sell my services for $49.99 if you do the same. And you would then agree. So now we are seeing collusion take place. But let's say uh, you want to increase the number of vehicles you want to wash. You may have the incentive to renege on this cartel, on this, you know, um, 
gentleman's honor of keeping prices set, and you might actually decrease price on your own without consulting the other owners uh, dramatically. And this explains why we see in the price of $50, no vehicles, very much steady, and then you are going to deeply decrease the price down to $19.99, and at the very end to $4.99, uh, in this case, you are trying to either outmaneuver your competitor, uh, the, your, the other owners may have thought that you were genuine in your word, but at this point you have simply kind of backstabbed the other owners uh, when it comes to uh, keeping prices level. So now we can multiply quantity and price to get total revenue. So let's do that now. So you should have gotten total revenue as a following for zero, quantity of vehicles, zero, and then to $49.99, $97.98, $143.97, $79.96, and then $24.95. So again, for the cost, I'm gonna keep the cost consistent as the previous examples. So let's go ahead and, and put the cost uh, columns in now. So again, what we did here was simply take the cost from the other examples and have simply uh, emulated the same cost that we have here. So again, we can see total costs is a function of variable costs plus fixed costs. We could also find ATC, AVC, AFC by taking total costs over quantity, ATC, variable costs over quantity to get AVC, and fixed costs over quantity to get AFC. Now, I am going to exclude AVC and AFC uh, because I just want to kind of show you graphically what an oligopoly market looks like on a graph. Now, our marginal cost, again, has not changed. It is the change in total cost over the change in quantity, our MC. And then now we can calculate our marginal revenue, which would be the change in total revenue over the change in quantity. Let's do that now. Now that we have our MR, we can now look at, at one, the marginal revenue would be $49.99, for two, $47.99, for three, $45.99, and for four and five, we now have a negative number. So again, when we are going to wash one more vehicle, this is how much in revenue we could expect to earn, and it would be normal to see a negative MR uh, in most businesses. So more importantly, now we can graph the last three columns and price, which is also our demand curve. And again, like a monopoly market and also a monopolistic competitive market, price, which is demand, does not equal MR in an oligopoly market. So now we can graph the following columns.